Next up. Boy, there's, you know, there's a lot of people who really need to get gone, and this, this next candidate, he, he has a pretty big and uh, I would hope pretty easy target, but unfortunately the political climate of downtown Milwaukee is not going to make his an easy task, but I'll bet you that because of the political climate, because of the economic decline caused by people like Gwen Moore, that uh, Dan Sebring will have a much better chance than he might otherwise. Dan is the owner of an automotive repair shop in the city of Milwaukee. And uh, let's welcome Dan. Give him heck here, boy. I have no great gift for oratory. I promise I'll be brief. <laughs> to quote Joel Hyatt, somewhere along the way, a great idea got lost. America's founding fathers were farmers, tradesmen, and lawyers. And when the need arose, they set their private lives aside to serve their country. We've forgotten that when the Founding Fathers laid the foundation of our government, the House of Representatives, the office that I'm running for, was meant to be the direct link between the people and the government. My work experience began like a lot of entrepreneurs at the age of 12 with a paper route. Shortly after that, I was apprenticed as a cabinet maker. Eventually, I decided that auto mechanics would be my vocation. At the age of 24, I enlisted to serve my country in the United States Navy, where I served on the Chief of Naval Operations Intelligence Staff at the Pentagon during the Reagan administration. <laughs> 23 years ago, after completing my military service, I returned home to Milwaukee where I've owned and operated an auto repair business for the past 17 years. As an auto mechanic, I've spent the lion's share of my adult life listening to the problems of others, then finding and implementing solutions to those problems. Nancy Pelosi's favorite incumbent from Wisconsin's 4th District, on the other hand, is a product of the welfare state, a person who has not once in her life been employed by a for-profit business. A person for whom all things throughout her life have been provided, either directly or indirectly, at the taxpayer's expense. <laughs> Being a member of the Socialist Democrats of America, that's the way she believes it should be. She believes she's in touch with the people of the 4th Congressional District, to which I have to ask, how can that be? What could possibly be her frame of reference? I've made my way through this world with the sweat of my brow. She's made her way through this world with the sweat of the taxpayer's brow. Recently, we've heard her personal mantra change from I have to do what I think is best to I have a responsibility to govern. The meaning of those words coming from a member of the Socialist Democrats of America cannot be mistaken. As a member of Congress, it's her responsibility to be a representative of the people to the government, not a representative of the government to the people. In debate immediately prior to the vote on health care reform, the 4th District incumbent stood on the House floor and gave the people she claims to represent the ultimate slap in the face when she referred to arguments against the reform as laughable. This commentary, incidentally, was plagiarized from a conservative blog, a blog that said, if the situation weren't so serious, the left's arguments in favor of health care reform would be laughable. I've been contacted by Democrats and union stewards who voted for Gwen Moore. They spoke to me at length about being ignored, laughed at, and even hung up on by members of her staff, both locally and in Washington, D.C. As your representative, I will institute an open office policy, a policy by which each resident will have a real public voice, thereby enabling me to stand on the House floor and say this is what the people want. As your elected representative, I pledge that I will work to restore liberty, not restrict it, shrink government, not expand it, cut taxes, not raise them, 
promote liberty and freedom for the citizens, not government interference in their daily lives, protect the sanctity of innocent life, whether elderly, disabled, or unborn, and observe the limits of power as they are written in our Constitution, not ignore them. Ronald Reagan once said, we the people tell the government what to do. It doesn't tell us. We the people are the driver. The government is the car. And we tell it where to go, and by what route, and how fast. Almost all the world's constitutions are documents in which governments tell the people what their privileges are. Our Constitution is a document in which we, the people, tell the government what it is allowed to do. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come to say no more. Thank you for the opportunity to appear before you today. My name is Dan Sebring, and I want to be your voice in Washington, D.C.